I just really don't want to spend time with Johnny. I mean, and then, then sometimes I have to, you, I have to woo him up to <laughs> explain you, something because, I mean. You, know, you, you probably need to interview Jakey Longdon. He's a deputy in town. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he knows, he he left there, he's still fairly young, but he he was around a lot of that in a pretty good hand. And when he's in high school there, he's in high school when I went to work, and they could ever mount nothing, but he, he did make a good cowboy and a darn good roper. Really good roper. But he, he rode over Levi one time. I loaned him to him on a drive somewhere and he he said, I believe that's the most enjoyable day I ever spent a horseback. But he traveled easy and he never raised his head above the breast collar and you you I mean just move your hand, he's turn around and go, you know. But uh, I kept lots of horses around there that if, if like one time Robinson's got reined in out there and they couldn't get out with their horses and well, come on, I'll mount you. I got enough horses. And I let Jim Robson ride old Levi. I know his dad, Joe, rode an old... First horse I ever picked moved Sandy was a crop out paint, nifty. Uh, I let Joe ride him. He, I rode him three or four years, and the kids started riding him. I started loaning him to Mark Allen. I team roped on him, roped all kinds of stuff. Uh, but anyway, that ain't when we got through, Jim told me, he said, I believe pretty nice to drive a Cadillac once in a while. <laughs> Talking about old Levi. Yeah, yeah. He was a nice horse, and I wish they had him back. That's this gray mare here, and, and that her mother down here, where their daddy was a half brother to Levi. Those Goldfinger's horses. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, when I first went to work for Lewis, they had Sonata Blue and a horse called Nifty Power come from Wagner's. Those horses was a little bit bronchy. A lot of Sonata Blues was bronchy. I mean, they was humpy. But when Thing about a Sonata Blue, you could show them something, change leads or something, and and not ask them again for a month. But when you ask them, it was there. They remembered it. Now the Goldfingers, they was a little stronger minded. It took you a while to get through yeah. one of them. Yeah. You had to be kind of hard on them. But after I figured out, I went to two Ray Hunt clinics, and after I figured out how to get along with them, well, we got along pretty good, and I liked them. They they strong on the end of a rope. I mean, they they were roping rascals. You had an opportunity growing up where you learned from some of the old school old timers and the way they handled horses, their attitudes towards horses, what they expected of horses. Did you see uh, some changes in yourself, maybe, where you took what education you started out with and then you found ways to make things work a little bit easier? Well, and, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way, but a lot of what you learned was what not to do. Mm -hmm. uh, now, mm -hmm. when I first moved down there, you didn't know nothing. I thought I did, but I didn't know nothing. They put me out there holding the cut. And then when they, you know, they're cutting dry cows or bulls or something out there. They're sorting them off. Uh, sorting them off. This is outside. We yeah. didn't, didn't do all that in the pen. And you'd, sit, you'd have time to sit out there and watch. And uh, mm -hmm. all those guys, if horses wouldn't do quite right, they didn't, they'd just go do something else rather than fix it, you know. And I had one neighbor, I was always spinning my horse around, getting them, getting them turned around like I wanted them to, you know. A neighbor said, well, you can't spin a cow around up, and I said, I bet I can. But you, I mean, you put them, you know, enough, times where they need to be, they'll do it on their own. They uh, will. I mean, I, you know, I, I just thought about things a little different. I expected more out of my horses than most people. And I wasn't going to go somewhere and ride a horse that was going to embarrass me. If he's going to embarrass that, me. That's one of the things I have got he, wrote down in he, big capital letters. He and would, I've never heard anybody else say that other than, than I, a lot of people may have thought it. Nobody put it in words other Johnny. Well, they didn't want to be embarrassed by his horse. And that, I mean, when you're around a bunch of cowboys that, I mean, they they expect a certain amount of performance, and you got to hold up your end or somebody else's. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, you know, I and I got some friends right now that wear a horse completely out and not ever have them broke. They do a day's job on them and get by. Get by. But that's what they're doing, just getting by. And I, of course, I'm a competitive rascal. 
when I show up, I want to be riding, if not the best horse there, or close to it. And, and didn't always happen. I mean, you know, you riding young horses, you got to take them to teach them. Uh, but you need to. I think I've been in enough wrecks that I could see one coming a mile away, and I learned to stay out of them best that you could. Uh, sometimes stuff just happens that you don't have no control over. But when I, like when I started dragging calves on my young horses, if the calves were big, I wouldn't go in there because you you don't hurt them as much physically as you do mentally. That's right. Uh, Start rope eight or ten little old calves, and then you might drag one a little bigger, and then go back and drag another to and then quit while he's in a good frame of mind. The horse. The horse is in a good frame of mind. Uh, you know, and, and you do that a while, and after a while, they don't know what they can't pull. This own cow. Yeah, yeah. But just just like that old pain horse, crop out pain horse. Uh, Mark Allen rode him nearly till he wore him out. Well, he did in eight or ten years, and he said, I think that's the strongest horse on the end of the rope that I ever rode. And uh, one year at the ranch rodeo, which... But you'd part, started him. Yeah. I, the, the, yeah, yeah, that's the paint I, horse I we were talking about him. earlier. Uh, but I taught him and he, <laughs> to pull. Uh, one year, Donnie Hall barred him to drag calves on at the ranch rodeo at Wichita Falls, and he is muddy, and he double hocked the calf and that rope went out the other side and, and caught a cow's hind foot and of course you know what happened it pulled down on the cow instead of the calf yep. well she couldn't kick it off and, and Hadley Barrett was the announcer he said well I don't guess there's no reason you can't brand a cow and he drug that cow in the mud looked like he's plowing out there I don't know how far out to the fire and they Jakey and Billy Farley flanked that cow and they branded her and that horse might got a lot of people teaching I imagine right, right there. Then. Yes, sir, buddy. But, uh, you know, and, and I argued with Mark. He said that strongest horse on the rope I ever saw, and I said, he's not stronger than Levi. Oh, yeah, he is. But he's a bigger horse than Levi. But he just, I don't know, something about Levi, he was just exceptionally strong. But all them gold fingers were strong in their mind, strong in their back. But I've, I've had a good life, enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, rode lots of good horses. Rode, I, I come near condemning a horse over not just being sorry rather than rank. I didn't mind a rank horse at all, you know. I just, well, they they kept your attention, you yeah. know. You didn't go to sleep. Uh, you better not. <laughs> but then most of the time that I've been bucked off was by a gentle horse because you wasn't paying attention to them. Right. You know. You so relax on them. You relax and do something stupid, and mm -hmm. then they'll jump out from under you and say, well, good Lord, mm -hmm. <laughs> how'd that happen, you know. 